builder add-on works with the Invector Shooter template. Inside this package, you will find this demo scene showing how it works. So let's take a look at the features that are included. Basically, you can collect an item and place it anywhere in the scene. You can also rotate the object to fit into a particular space. And there is also a collision detector to avoid spawning the object on obstacles such as walls. The spike trap will turn on the ragdoll of the target, of course, if it has one. The mine will explode as soon as the target becomes within range. The flamethrower turns on automatically when the target is within range. It also works like a shooter weapon. It can have unlimited ammo or you can manually reload the ammo item of this weapon. Same thing for the turret. It's pretty cool, right? The wooden board is also a pretty cool, but it's not really a builder add-on. It was created with our generic action system, so we are not going to focus on that for this tutorial. All of the items are displayed on our inventory, and you can drop it or destroy it if you want. You can also equip these items and switch between in the equip slots. Now let's see how we can set up this feature into a Invector character controller. In this example, I will use the default third-person shooter controller prefab with a inventory which the builder requires as I mentioned earlier. I don't want to mess up the original scene and the prefabs in case I need to check how something works. So I will create a copy of this scene and the controller prefab and move it into my project folder. The same for the item list data that this controller uses. Now let's assign the mine item list data that we just created into our my controller prefab. So let's start with the builder manager. Drag and drop the prefab inside your character. This prefab already contains everything included in the scene ready to go. The builder manager is responsible to handle all the builder objects that you have for this character. If you open the hierarchy of, of this prefab, each one has its own settings, such as 3D model mesh previews that you will see when you enter the build mode. What layer can be spawned, if it aligns with the surface or if it's placed flat, options for the character to strafe while in build mode, uh, to play a custom camera state, adjust the rotate speed, if you want to trigger an animation while placing the objects, like the examples included, you can use the trigger generic action to do so. Now, if you want to simply press the input and spawn the object directly and immediately, just assign the builder object prefab to the spawn prefab field and remove the generic action to the inspector. The icon ID that we'll use, that's very important by the way, and several offsets to adjust the position of the character and the object when spawning it. It's important to respect the layers and tags used on these objects, especially the mesh preview which does use a collider to detect the space necessary to build that particular object. When you create your own builder object, it's recommended to duplicate one of these objects and modify the necessary settings like the mesh preview and the item ID. Now 
we must set up the inventory to be able to equip the item type builder. You can always start clean with this prefab example, but let's assume that you already have your own controller all set up with custom animations and a custom inventory with a item list data filled with new items that you created. And you don't want to lose all of your customizations. So let's transfer the builder items from the builder item list data to your list. Open your item list and click on add items. Now dock this window for now. Now select the builder item list data in the project window and click show items in hierarchy. Now drag and drop the items to your list. Good, now we have the builder items on our custom list. But notice that the ID of each one is different from the previous list. That happens because each ID must be unique. So if an ID already exists in this list, it will be replaced with a different ID. Select one of the item collectibles from the builder demo scene and update the item list data to your own list data. Now update the item itself so you can collect the correct one. Do this process for each collectibles in this scene. Remember that we must avoid changing the original prefab settings. So the default demo scenes still works in case I need to check on how something works. So let's create a prefab variant with our own modifications to keep the original using the default item ID for the builder demo scene. Now that we have the items and the collectibles updated on our list, let's make our inventory read and keep those items. I will briefly describe our inventory structure so you can better understand what we are about to configure. If you open the documentation included, the inventory consists on three main components that we need to set up. The equipment display window will display the current item you have equipped on this slot. The item window will display the, all the items that you set up to be displayed. And the equip area control controls what item type will be equipped and how many slots are available on that equip area. You can switch between those slots using a input and the equipment display will display the items. Open up your inventory prefab and select the item windows where all the items are displayed. You can either share a item window like a consumable slash builder by just adding the builder in the supported item list or Duplicate one of your item windows to display only builder items. Again, select the supported items in the inspector, 
and add the builder items to it. Now open the equipment window and duplicate one of the existing equip area controls. Change the item type to builder so it will only equip builder items on this slot. And finally, the equipment display window, which displays what item you're currently equipped in game. Again, let's duplicate one of the existing equip displays, adjust the position in the screen, and select the inventory component at the root of the prefab. Open the change equipment controllers list and add one more. Assign the equip area that we previously created and the equip display we've just created. Change the previous item input from down arrow to up arrow and uncheck the negative values since we want a positive value, meaning that the D-pad up in the controller uh, instead of the down to switch between the equip slots. That's it. It sounds more complicated than it actually is, but basically you only need to do this process once. Now you are free to expand the system and create your own builder items. Have fun!